Let's meet Julia. She has a sweet tooth and loves to consume sugary treats. One sunny morning, Julia wakes up groggy, tired, and hungry for her usual breakfast consisting of her favorite bowl of cereal and a slice of toast. Little does she know that her breakfast contains 25 grams of sugar. Without knowing it, Julia has already exceeded the recommended daily sugar intake for women in just her first meal. According to the American Heart Association, the AHA, the recommended sugar intake for men is 36 grams or 9 teaspoons, and for women it is 25 grams or 6 teaspoons. Around lunchtime, Julia realizes that she needs to get some groceries, and so she heads to her nearest grocery store. Julia picks her usual items without much thought. She picks up things like pasta sauce, protein bars, fruit juices, canned soup, and pop but she does not realize how much sugar is in each of these products. When Julia looks at the amount of sugar in each of these items, she's shocked, and so Julia decides that she needs to take a step back and make healthier choices. Unfortunately, she chooses to stop consuming all forms of added sugar. As a result, the next few days on Julia's new diet were extremely difficult. Julia felt more anxious, irritable, and had a very difficult time concentrating and sleeping. Julia did not know why she was feeling that way. This made Julia feel very discouraged and so she decided to give up on her new diet and continue to consume the food she would normally eat. Unfortunately, Julia failed to realize that she had a sugar addiction. Similarly, out of 9,000 people that were surveyed, results showed that 82% of people consumed more sugar than the recommended amount. And so sometimes people may have a sugar addiction and not even know it. Substance addiction is a disorder of the brain's reward system. This leads to dependency on the substance. In this case, it's sugar. Most people consider substance addiction to be only present with alcohol and drugs. However, studies have shown that sugar can be even more addictive. Interestingly, a study conducted by Lenoir et al. in 2007 revealed that 94% of the rats preferred the taste of sugar over cocaine. And this speaks to the highly addictive nature of the substance. Interestingly, there are noticeable changes in the brain due to addiction. The consumption of sugar leads to the release of a happy molecule known as dopamine in the brain. This molecule helps us to become happy. The body then remembers the thing that made us happy, which in this case is sugar. This causes us to want to eat more sugar so that we can experience the same level of happiness again. And this is called the mesolimbic dopamine pathway. This leads to tolerance and it is a key characteristic of addiction. Tolerance is when a person needs to consume more of the addictive substance in order to get the same happy effects. And so addiction takes advantage of the mesolimbic dopamine pathway and this causes us to want to consume more and more sugar. When the individual has a regular craving for the addictive substance, this leads to dependency. And so the consumption of the substance helps us avoid discomfort associated with withdrawal. And so when we consume a lot of sugar on a daily basis, the brain receives a lot more happy molecules and they make us feel happy. But when we stop consuming sugar, the brain is not receiving the same amount of the happy molecule, which leads to symptoms of withdrawal. Withdrawal is a physical and mental phenomenon, and withdrawal can be seen through Julia's symptoms when she stops consuming all forms of added sugar in the form of anxiousness, irritability, and trouble sleeping and concentrating. In the brain, the amygdala is responsible for our stress and emotional response. And so when the person stops eating sugar, the amygdala becomes activated and leads to negative feelings associated with withdrawal. Withdrawal makes it difficult for the person to stay committed to a new lifestyle. And this is why people can often relapse. And we saw this with Julia, who returned to her normal diet. In addition to the brain, other parts of the body can be affected by sugar addiction as well. The overconsumption of sugar is a major contributing factor to obesity. 
Obesity has been on the rise in the last few decades. In fact, 52% of the global population is overweight or obese. In addition, the sugar intake levels are different around the world as certain communities consume more sugar compared to others. As you can see, Western communities consume way more sugar than the recommended amount. The increased sugar consumption can be a contributing factor to the rising obesity rates in developed Western communities. For example, 72% of the US population falls into the overweight or obese category. Obesity has detrimental impacts on the individual's health and it can lead to diseases such as diabetes. When a person has type 2 diabetes, they're unable to regulate their blood sugar levels because the body can no longer efficiently respond to insulin. Insulin is a very important molecule that the body uses to regulate our blood sugar levels. The incidence rate of obesity is sharply correlated with diabetes. Through all of this information, Julia learns that she needs to make a difference in her lifestyle and reduce the amount of sugar she's consuming. As a result, she decides to educate herself on strategies that she can use to overcome the addiction. Primarily, Julia wants to manage her sugar intake and follow the recommended amounts set forth by the AHA. As a result, Julia uses the nutrition facts to closely monitor how much sugar is in the food items she purchases from the grocery store. In addition, Julia chooses healthy alternatives such as fruits that have natural sugars in them. She also learns that she can consume foods that are high in fiber. Fiber is really important because it can help to slow down the absorption of sugar and counteract the harmful effects of sugar. Julia also learns the importance of exercise as exercise can help to regulate blood sugar levels and is an important part of a healthy lifestyle. Most importantly, Julia understands that overcoming sugar addiction is a difficult journey that will take time and she may even have relapses in the process. But Julia wants to strike a healthy balance as it can be very easy to overindulge in sugary items but they can still be enjoyed if they're consumed in moderation. Julia realizes that many people just like herself may be going through sugar addiction and not even know it. And so Julia wants to work tirelessly to increase public awareness and education on the topic. Specifically, studies have shown that individuals with a lower socioeconomic status often consume more sugar. This is due to the expensive nature of healthier alternatives. And as a result, Julia hopes that government policies are established to increase the availability of healthier and more affordable foods for all. And just as Julia did, we want to encourage all of you to look at your eating habits and determine, is it just too sweet?